Hey yo, what's poppin' people? Welcome to another video. Um, I have a really nice one today that you guys have been wanting for quite some time now because I have not made a video on the old jig. And today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to catch more bass on a jig in one specific way that will help you guys catch a lot more fish. You guys are gonna take a lot of value out of this video. You can go apply it to ponds, you can go apply it to lakes, and I promise you, you can go catch a lot of fish on it. So I have a lot of jigs set to the side over here that we're gonna be talking about before we start throwing out there and I'll start showing you a little bit of techniques and uh, to catch more bass. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about you know what jigs I picked out today, why I picked them out, and also some of the trailers to put on them. Also, as you guys can tell, I got a haircut. Um, it's pretty shaved on the sides. She cut it. She she dang butchered me up right here. So uh, best roast in the comment section below gets a shout out on my Instagram. Also, though, uh, I would like you guys to leave a comment on you know what how to fish video you'd like to see next, along with the roast about you roasting the old carpet on my head but let's get to it so i actually have a jig box with me today and these are my big jigs as you say uh, 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 as you could tell big jig right there on the box and what these big jigs are going to be is like football head jigs three quarter ounce all the way to an ounce jigs these are some big mama jigs but um i'll explain that here in a minute and i have some of these like archie style jig heads right here um, these are more of your standard jigs especially jigs that if you're wanting to skip around docks wanting to throw some just around some cover coming to these ponds more of lighter style jigs this one's actually by chattahoochee jig i know you guys the og fans you know you know about this jig right here and uh, also it's got a little strike king one right here um all standard really great jigs right here i have them in three different colors this is going to be your standard jig that you're going to want to throw um say you're coming to a pond this is usually what I go with. They also have those little bitsy bugs that you can actually get at Walmart, Dick Sporting Goods. Some jigs that you can pretty much buy, you know, wherever you go. On um, their bitsy bugs by Strike. I want to say it's called Bitsy Bug by Strike King. It's a little smaller jig. It's a little smaller profile. Great for ponds. Great for catching, you know, some fish out here on the water. As you guys can tell, how the head shaped right there. This one is going to glide across the water very, very good. And you're going to be able to skip this a lot easier than if you're throwing a huge football jig. So let me show you a few of these and what I have in this box. So as you guys can tell right there, that is a old football jig. Mainly what I throw these around is when I'm at Kentucky Lake, when I'm at Pickwick, I'm fishing some huge ledges that are very, very deep. And I'm throwing these one ounce or three quarter ounce jigs out there and slaying some huge bass. The only downside about this huge football head right here is that the fish can fling it very easy because there's a lot of weight on the end of that. So when a fish comes up and shakes their head, you will lose a lot of fish on that. That, that is just one thing. But for you guys that are just coming out pond fishing, it's about all you need right here. Maybe a little heavier one, which I will discuss later on in the video and why. But this is just, you know, my old football jig box. Got three quarter ounce, one ounce jigs. I just thought I'd bring this out and show you guys a few styles of jigs that I use and that I have. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about a few trailers that I actually brought out with me today. These are all the old standard rage crawls. You guys know I absolutely love rage crawls. I throw them on a Texas rig. I reel it across the water. I reel it beneath the surface. I work it on the bottom. I have a video on that. If you guys want to go check it out, I'll pop it right here. Pop it up in the corner as well. That's a stellar video. Um, you guys will learn some stuff out of that for sure. But for these crawls, really great. This one's actually black and red. This one is green pumpkin with a little bit of chartreuse on it. So this would be more for clear water. This would be more for dirty water right here. I also have the old twerk by Reaction Innovation. This is going to be more of like a chunk trailer. It's like that as you guys can tell Let me show you guys how you would rig this because this one is going to be slightly different than the old rage crawls I actually call this hanging your meat You just uh, simply all you got to do so you got this Just go right through the middle Obviously this color is not gonna not ideal for this jig, but it's just gonna hang down just like that very simple easy presentation and uh, it flows really well with that jig. The last jig trailer that I have with us today, it's not necessarily a jig trailer, but you can throw it on a jig, and it will increase your bites for catching bigger fish. It's this old beaver right here by Reaction Innovations. This one is actually a watermelon red. On the other side is actually black and red. This is a stellar color. I believe this is California Ford. Yeah, California Ford 20. This is Reaction Innovations. This is a big bulky profile of a trailer, and um, I, I've experimented a lot with you know beaver style baits versus crawls and I can tell you, you will catch a lot bigger fish on this so if you want a big profile jig I really highly recommending this guy right here so the last thing that I really need to talk about is obviously the rod and reel that you need to be throwing with the jig if you guys can tell right here I got the old concept z by 13 fishing I almost use this on you know every single bait that I throw I actually have this on a fake chrome 
The most important part about a jig is obviously gonna be the rod. The reel doesn't matter that much, but obviously the rod. And uh, what would I recommend throwing it on? You can have like a 7.3 heavy power rod, or you can have a 7.6 heavy power, or you can go with more of a medium heavy power rod and go with like a seven foot to seven foot three medium heavy, which I absolutely love as well. If I'm fishing some of these ponds and I'm just out here, you know, just messing around and, uh, or if I'm skipping docks that are, you know, fairly shallow, I would usually use a medium heavy. Um, that's my personal preference. I know a lot of people will probably use a heavy power when they're throwing a jig in general. Um, but a majority of the time I would recommend like a seven three to seven foot six heavy power rod. But if you're just out here having fun, I don't see why you know you couldn't go out here with a seven foot seven foot three medium heavy and uh still wax some fish as well but the main important thing is you know getting that hook through that weed guard right there and that's why when you have a heavy power rod it's very important to stick that fish on a jig and the last thing i would like to talk about right here is obviously the line and i would range anywhere between 15 pound all the way up to 20 pound fluorocarbon on an old jig so right here as you guys can tell i just have a standard red jig right here it's got the little archie style head as you guys can tell i've caught a lot of fish on this let's have a little speed crawl on the end of it the pinchers are actually gone but for this video it's not going to really matter that much i pretty much want to talk about where you would throw a jig when you're at these ponds you know you, you come out to them and the most important thing at least to me when fishing new areas and fishing ponds is to locate the cover and figure out what those fish are on. And when throwing a jig, it is really important to locate, you know, those trees, those laydowns laying down the water. You can catch a lot of good fish doing that. Um, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to cover water with a jig, especially when going to a new area to catch more fish. And that's the main purpose of this video. But say you're at a lake, um, you know, skipping under docks is always a great way to fish jigs. Um, there's big football jigs. I know I take them out the ledges and I absolutely whack the bass on it. Um, throwing this thing on some old rock is also an amazing way to catch some good fish and obviously lay downs. Um, it's just important to find the cover to throw that jig on to get those bites. But let's go ahead and talk about, you know, a few ways to work this jig to help you catch more bass. Alrighty, and this goes down to pretty much me talking about, you know, coming to a pond, figuring out what cover you want to fish. There's actually some submerged stumps right here below the surface that I'm actually about to be throwing at. You can't really see them because they're submerged under the water. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old jig and I'm going to just flip them right on the edge of these stumps. I'm going to work it very, very slow. This is the old standard technique with the jig that I love. It's just straight dragging the jig, just slowly, slowly, slowly working it back to you. And that is just a way to catch a lot of fish on a jig, simply just dragging it on the bottom. That, that is like... One of the most basic ways to catch a fish on a jig and it will catch a lot of fish so don't you know don't go do a lot of fancy stuff unless you know what you're obviously doing and what this fish want that type of day but if you're just going to go out and throw a jig on this cover simply just dragging your bait alongside of it pitching into that tree is also a very important thing and one thing that i love about a jig is when you are fishing this thing this is this is awesome about a jig is you can pretty much go through all these trees and lay downs and you can pitch right i thought i had one for a minute there uh you can actually go right through these trees and lay downs pitch right up in it and most of the time you're really not going to get hung up just because of that weed guard that you have on the bait and it's going to help a lot with uh minimizing you know you getting hooked up and that's one thing that i love about a jig and that's why i love pitching and throwing and skipping a jig around covers because you can just work it through it so so easy but that is one technique or one way that you can work this bait is simply just dragging it. All right, just dragging it right in that cover, dragging it right by that cover. And that is gonna be a really basic way to get a lot of bites and a really solid way if you wanna catch a lot of fish. So the second way I would like to show you guys to work a jig, which is very, very basic as well. If these fish are a little bit more active, and this is something that you're gonna really experiment with, with it goes along with dragging this bait. So um, this is the second way, is pretty much just simply popping your rod and really working that bait really slow. Like I'm on a stump right now and I'm just simply shaking the tip of my rod. I'm really feeling that cover, you know, I feel that tree right there and I'm just slightly creeping over it with that jig. And that is a very great way to catch fish, guys. A very, very, very great way. It's simply just, you know, hopping that jig along the bottom. And, and what's gonna happen is, you know, that jig's nose down. When you're hopping your rod, those little tails of that crawl or whatever you have on it is gonna be sitting there fluttering. So every time you pop your rod, those tails are just kicking up. And it can be a really great way to catch some fish. Um, if it is super, super tough outside, 
I'd say probably the best way to work a jig is going to be dragging it um, or almost dead sticking it in a way. And by dead sticking, what I mean is like throwing your bait out there on a piece of cover or wherever you're fishing. Say you're just out here on this pond and just letting it sit there. I'm slightly moving it every once in a while. That is a very productive way, especially on a tough day like today, um, which yesterday or last night was a full moon. So today is very tough, especially with uh, how, how cold it is outside. But with that second way right there, simply just popping your jig like this right off the bottom, just working it along all that cover is a very great way on getting a lot of bites. And one thing that I'm gonna get asked a lot in the comment section I already know is Noah, what do you do if there's a lot of grass in the lake? Or what do you do if there's, I'm gonna tell you guys easy and simple, if there's a lot of grass in your lake and you're throwing this jig, then if you, if you get some grass on your bait, the easiest way is to sit here and pop your rod like that. It's gonna kick all that grass right off that jig. You're, you're usually not gonna have any problems with that because a lot of these ponds are gonna have a lot of nasty grass in it. And usually I wouldn't be throwing a jig there, but it's still, it's still a way you can catch some fish. And if you do get grass on your bait, just simply stroke your rod up a few times and should kick that grass off. Before I talk about the third and final way to catch more fish on this jig, and it is the most crucial one that you know not many people are gonna know, and that's why I wanted to bring it into this video. Before I talk about that, I would like to say, when, when is the best time to throw a jig? And if I had one simple answer for that, I would say, you know, throw it anytime, guys. I, I'm telling you, I, I throw a jig year round. Lately in the past year, I really haven't thrown a jig much, but previously when I was really addicted to jig fishing and I was really catching a lot of fish on a jig, I was throwing it year round. I kept it on the boat at all times, but this time of year right here in the winter, it is a phenomenal bait because sometimes, you know, those bigger fish are wanting a bigger profile bait and this bait just, you know, matches so well. And usually most of the time you're gonna catch a bigger fish on a jig and that's why I enjoy throwing it is because you know, usually when you get a bite, it's gonna be a big one. And, and that's, that's, that's what's really great about a jig. But there's no set on rules to fishing guys. As I say in almost every single tip video, you guys do whatever the heck you wanna do. I mean, throw this on whatever rod you wanna throw it on, throw it whenever, whenever you wanna throw it. But um, the simple answer to that is you can throw a jig year round and still catch a lot of fish on it. So this one technique right here is what you've all been waiting for throughout this whole video. This is gonna help you catch five to 10 times more fish when you are bass fishing, whether it's a pond, whether it's a lake, wherever, whether it's a river, wherever you are at, this will help you catch a lot more fish because not many people are doing it. This is like the third way that I'm gonna show you on how to work this jig. And it's very important to know, if you are fishing some deep water, you need a heavy jig. That is exactly why I had that huge jig box over there that was filled with, you know, three quarter ounce to one ounce jigs it was because when I was out on Pickwick and Kentucky Lake, this was a very, very, very productive way to catch a lot of fish. And it is really hopping this jig across the bottom, but you need a big one. If you're fishing deep water, you need a heavy jig. I'm gonna let you know that. Me being in this pond with it being about four to five foot deep max, I can get along with this little Arky style jig right here that is very lightweight. So this is how you are gonna catch more fish on this jig right here. Simply throw your bait out there. All right, so you got your bait out there. You're gonna let it hit the bottom. That's very important on a jig. Any bottom working baits, you need to make sure they're on the bottom. And uh, this is what you're gonna do. There's a little bit of grass out there. Let me get it off my bait. All right. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna let your bait hit the bottom and then you're gonna start popping your bait like this. I don't know if you see my hand motion right now. See how I'm reeling as I'm popping my rod? And you guys notice that I'm not stopping this bait. This bait is popping the whole time. Like literally it's pop. I'm not going like this. I'm not popping and then waiting a minute. And popping and then waiting a minute. And then popping, popping, popping. You guys notice that I'm, I am literally popping this bait back to back to back to back. Here, I'll do it one more time for you. Throw your bait out there. Let it hit the bottom. Then you're gonna pop, 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 pop. If you look out there, look at my line popping. See how there's a lot of slack in my line? It's sitting there popping the water. Just like that. You're not stopping this bait. It's almost like a moving bait in a way. You're just gonna continue to keep popping that, just like that, until you work your bait all the way back to you. So I know you guys are asking, Noah, what is this really doing? And, and why is this gonna help me catch more fish? Well, first of all, this is how this bait is working in the water. 
So you have your jig right here. Your bait hits the bottom and it's nose down just like this. You got its little paddles, they're fluttering right here at the top. When you pop your rod, what it's doing is this bait's going pop, boom, just like that, all right? Pop, pop, and your bait's going up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's why it is very important to have a semi-heavy jig when fishing this is because you want that weight for it to go back down because you're popping your rod so fast. It's not like you're sitting here popping it and then it has time to flutter down. And then you're popping it again, it has time to flutter down. You're wanting this bait to literally go pop, pop, pop. And it's literally like it's just sitting there hopping across the bottom. And I cannot tell you how many, oh my gosh. I, I just cannot tell you how many big fish I've caught on this. I, if I had to really say, I'd say between five, four to six pound range, I've caught at least 35 to 40 fish doing this one technique. And this was years back when I was, you know, fishing Pickwick and Kentucky Lake a lot. And that's kind of how, you know, we, we got, got around, you know, working a jig like this is fishing out there. And now I brought it to, you know, ponds and lakes near me. And it's just amazing. It's really killer. I actually had it in one of my videos recently um, over the past couple of weeks and I was whacking them on it. And so one thing I would like to say is, you know, how is this going to make you catch more fish? How, how, is, how is this one technique right here going to help you catch five to ten times more bass? Well, let me tell you real quick. When you're coming out to a pond, and this, this is just like a lake as well. This, this relates to ponds and leaks. But I'm just going to use a pond as an example because I know a majority of you guys are just pond fishing. When you come out to a pond, and the first thing, at least that I tell you guys to look at, is look around and see if there's cover out. So you're looking over here, you know, you got some trees laying in the water. You're looking over here, you got a rock bank. You're looking over here, this, this, and that. Well, say you go over there and fish those trees, you fish those rocks, you pretty much fished everything. And, and, and now you're, you're figuring out, you know, there's a lot of big fish in this pond or whatever it is, you know, you know there's some fish in this pond and you wanna start throwing in the open water, which is exactly what I'm doing right here if you guys can look by the camera. This is just open water. There is really no cover sitting just right out here. And there might be a little, a few little transitions as in a few little drop offs or some grass out there, whatever it is, but there's really not, you know, trees and everything in the water. So the reason why this is so productive on getting a lot more bites is because, say I fished this tree, say I fished everything, I wanna go down this bank. It's gonna be painfully slow to sit there and drag a jig. It is going to be honestly insane, insanely painful, at least to me. I like working a fast bait. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working my jig like this. And I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna go down the bank. So, you know, I sit there, I throw out there, I'm popping my jig like this. Just covering water. All right, you know, I fished right there. I'm gonna fish right here now. Throw it out there, let it hit the bottom. Pop my rod. That is a lot quicker than sitting there throwing your jig out there and dragging it on the bottom. But let me say this because I know a lot of you guys are gonna take this in the wrong way. It's all gonna depend on the day. It's all gonna depend on how those fish are biting. But if those fish are biting and they're semi-active that day, you guys need to go take this technique out on the water and go give it a try yourself. One last thing I would like to talk about is the bite. <laughs> because that's obviously very important, is when you get a bite working the jig this way, because you're obviously popping your rod up like this the whole time. You're literally going like this the whole time. And that bait's just going up and down, up and down, up and down. So the only time that fish is gonna bite it is obviously when you're popping your rod. <laughs> so what's gonna happen is you're gonna be popping your rod and all of a sudden you're gonna go up one time and there's gonna be a fish on there. And the reason why you'll know there's a fish is because your rod's gonna bend. It's gonna feel, I can't really explain. It's gonna feel like something's kind of pulling back on you. So you're gonna pop up one time and your rod just gonna pull back down. And the most important thing about this is when you pop up, drive up with them, all right? Don't, this, this is the biggest mistake that I've shown a lot of people this that I know like personally, I haven't ever showed this really on YouTube. And, and the biggest mistake is, you know, they're popping the rod and they have a fish load up on it right here, like say my rod bent, and they go down and they wait a second and then they hook set. And, and listen, that, that that is the biggest way to lose a fish, especially working the bait this way, because you already just popped that fish in the head. You know, you just went like this and you notice he's on there. So he's gonna spit that bait very quick. So it's very important to either actively hook set up. So right when you pop that and that bait load or that fish loads up on it is to continue and drive up, okay? But if you can't do that, 
This is another thing you can do. This is this is what I do so, sometimes because it, it'll surprise you. I'm telling you, you guys go out here, work this jig like this. It's gonna scare you a few times because there's gonna be a fish loading up, popping your rod, and that fish loads up on it, and you don't have time to go all the way up. So it is important. I mean, you can come down a little bit and jack them. You know what I mean? Just come down a little bit. You don't have to go up all the way. But don't go down, wait a minute, and then hook set because you will lose the fish because it's gonna spit that bait out. You already popped it in his mouth. He's not gonna want it again. But that is the one way right there. I promise you guys, if you go take it to a lake, a pond, a river, wherever you're fishing, go try this technique. If the fish are semi-active that day, and you will, it's a guaranteed fact, catch good. five to 10 times more fish just because you're not having to work it as slow and you're gonna be able to cover a lot more water. All right, everyone, that is going to conclude this video, but do not leave yet because I would like you guys to leave a comment below on what how to fish video you guys would like to see next. You guys have been tearing these videos up. They've been doing really, really, really well. I mean, anywhere between, you know, 15 to 20,000 views, which is pretty good for a video on my channel this time of year. So be sure to pepper that like button up if you guys got some value out of this video. Be sure to let me know in the comment section below which how to fish video you would like to see next. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm Noah. Be sure to be uh, be, be, be. be sure to press that subscribe button and also press the little notification bell right next to it so it sends you post notifications. Thank you guys so much for the support. I catch you guys in the next video. I got sky like the weather man, uh I cry cars get hella bands, uh I got a bar from the motherland, uh I got shooters with us, uh I get it, get it up uh, anyway, uh pull up skirt in the hurricane, uh I cry cars cook every day, uh I get money up uh, every day, uh